This is the second of three videos on the rules of indices. In the first video, we looked at multiplying and dividing when the bases were the same. We saw that a to the power of m multiplied by a to the power of n was equal to a to the power of m plus n. We then looked at dividing with the same base. We said a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n was equal to a to the power of m minus n. So these were the first two rules that we looked at. In this video, we're going to look at two new rules. The first rule that we're going to look at is a to the power of m raised to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m multiplied by n, which we just write as mn. So that's the first rule that we're going to look at. So let's look at this in action. Let's say I have now a base and the base is 2 and I raise this to the power of 3, I then raise this to the power of 2. I would have 2 to the power of 3 times by 2, which would give me 2 to the power of 6. If we just think about 2 to the power of 3, this is going to be 8. We would then square 8. 8 squared is going to give us 64. And as we saw in the last video, the powers of 2, 2 4, then we're going to have 8, we're going to have 16, 32 and 64. And we can see 2 to the power of 6 is going to give us 64. So we have a to the power of m raised to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m multiplied by n. We have to be careful with this particular rule. So for example, a common error might be now 2x to the power of 4 raised to the power of 3. We must remember that this is a little 1. So what we're going to have is 2 to the power of 3 times by 1, which is going to give us 2 to the power of 3. And then x to the power of 4 times by 3, which is x to the 12. Sometimes students write, and this is not correct, it doesn't equal 6x to the power of 12. We're not multiplying the 3 by the 2, we're multiplying the powers. So for example, now if I had, let's say we've got 3 and then we have pq squared, and I raise this now to the power of 3, I'm going to first put on a little 1 here and a little 1 here. That's going to give me 3 to the power of 3, p to the power of 3, and q to the power of 6. Sometimes we would write this now as 27, so 27 p cubed q to the 6. In the same way, we might write this as 8x to the 12. So that now is raising to a power. That is the first rule that we're going to look at. So let's go ahead and work through some of these. So we're asked to simplify each of the following a squared raised to the power of 3, so we simply multiply the 2 and the 3, and we get a to the power of 6. We're going to have c to the power of 3 times by 6, which is going to give me 18. We're going to have x to the power of 7 times by 4, which is 28. x to the power of 12. And being careful on this one, we're going to have 4 to the power of 1 multiplied by x to the power of 1, all raised to the power of 2. So we're going to get 4 to the power of 2, I'm just multiplying the 2 and the 1, and x to the power of 2, which we could write as 16x squared. This is the same as saying 4x multiplied by 4x. We know if we square bracket, we're simply multiplying it. So 4 times by 4 we know is going to give us 16, x times by x is x squared. So we can see either way around, this holds true. Being careful here, we've got 3, then we've got x squared, all squared. Putting my little 1 on, we can have 3 squared, x to the power of 4. So I could write this as 9x to the power of 4. This one just here, we're going to have 16, that's 4 squared, and then we're going to have y to the power of 6. If I knew, now do 2 to the power of 4, that's going to give me 16. a to the power of 2 raised to the power of 4, 
will give me a to the power of eight. We'll do um, do another one. Let's just say we've got now two to the power of three, and then we have now p to the power of minus one and q to the power of zero. And we raise this now to the power of four. We're going to have two to the power of 12. So I'm going to multiply, uh, sorry, two, let's write the 12 as the power. So two to the power of 12. So two to the power of 12 which uh, is what, 4,096, let's just check that, two to the, I'll just try two to the power of 12, two to the power of 12, uh, 4,096, yeah, 4,096, so two to the power of 12, I will write it correctly, then we're going to have P to the minus four, and then we're gonna have Q to the power of zero. Four times by zero is zero. So we can say that this is going to be equal to 4096p to the minus 4. Remember, q to the 0 is just 1. Alternatively, we could write this as 4096 over p to the 4th. Either one of these is perfectly fine, and the further you go on with your work, the more you'll work between them. So all we're looking to do now is raise to a power. Okay, if we look at this now, we're just going to be multiplying. So this one right here is x to the half raised to the third power. So we're going to do 3 times 1 half, which we would write as 3 over 2. You can write this as x to the power of 1.5, but generally when we're dealing with algebra, fractions are easier. A quarter times 2, that's going to give us a to the 1 half power. We'll see in a later video that the 1 half power is the square root. If we look at this one, we're going to have 2 to the power of 1, b to the power of 1 third, raised to the power of 3. Multiplying, that's going to give me 2 to the power of 3, and then we're going to have b, 1 third of 3, is going to give me 1. So we could simply write this now as 8b. If we look at this one now, we're going to have 5 to the 1 half power, and then we're going to have y to the power of 3. 3 over 2. I could write this, if I was really cheeky, as the root of 5, y to the power of 3 over 2. When you go on to work with thirds, this will make sense, as the half power can be written as the square root. So, that's our rule. If we have a to the power of m raised to the power of n, we say it's a to the power of m multiplied by n, or just mn. We're now going to go on to look at the zero power. When we have anything to the zero power, so two to the zero, this would be one. If we had x to the zero, this would be one. If we had five p, all to the power zero, this would be one. Let's just look at this now and see how it works. If I start off now with two to the power of five, that is going to be equal to 32. 2 to the power of 4 is going to give me 16. 2 to the power of 3 is going to give me 8. 2 to the power of 2 is going to give me 4. 2 to the power of 1, or just 2, is going to give me 2. If I now consider 2 to the power of 0, if we look at this side, we're subtracting 1 each time, and this side, we're dividing by 2. 2 is the base. So we can see, if I'm going to divide the right hand side by 2 when I'm subtracting 1 2 divided by 2 gives me 1 we can show this is true for any number well 0 um, not being the case um, so let's go ahead and do it with 3 3 to the power of 4 is 81 we've got 3 to the power of 3 is 27 3 squared is equal to 9 3 to the power of 1 is equal to 3 3 to the 0 therefore I'm subtracting 1 from here, I'm dividing by the base each time, dividing by the base, and then we're going to have to end up with 1. In the next video, we will look at negative powers, and hopefully you can see what we're going to have as a result. So let's go ahead and answer some questions. So 2 to the 0, we've just looked at that, that is going to be 1. x to the 0, that will be 1. All of this bracket right here is raised to the zero power, so the whole of the bracket becomes one. We've got three to the one. One multiplied by zero gives us zero. 
1 multiplied by 0 gives us 0, and 2 multiplied by 0 gives us 0. So if you wanted, you could write this as 3 to the 0, x to the 0, y to the 0. So all this is now is 1 times by 1 times by 1, which quite clearly gives us the 1. This is slightly different because what we have is 5 lots of p to the 0. So that's just 5 lots of 1, which is going to give us 5. This is not, so 5p to the 0 is not the same as 5p raised to the 0, as our 5 is in the brackets. This is saying 5 lots of p to the 0. It's similar to saying 2x squared is not the same as 2x all squared. So just be careful with those, and that will give us now a nice way of simplifying these. So let's recap. If we have now, as we've got our first two rules, a to the power of m multiplied by a to the power of n is going to give us now a to the power of m plus n. We add the powers. a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n, when the base is the same and we're dividing, we subtract the powers. So it's m minus n. So m plus n, a to the power of m raised to the power of n, we multiply, and we can write that as a to the power of mn, and a to the power of 0 will give us 1. So we've now built up four of the rules of indices. In the final video, we will look at the last two rules and also look at some extension questions.